journey from uh, Ukraine to Maui. Okay, and uh, we are joined by two Ukrainians, uh, Vladlina Bugai and Igor Topa, her father. And they are in Maui, and we can talk to them here on Global Connections. I'm Jay Fidel. This is Think Tech. I'm so happy to be able to talk to them. Hi, Vlada. Thank you for coming on the show. Uh, hi, Jay. And would you say the same to your dad? Igor, thank you for coming on the show. Tell him that and see what he says to you. Jay, thank you for being on this show. We are now in the show. Thank you. Thank you too. So, uh, Vlada, tell us how you got and when you got and how your father got and when he got to Maui. Um, me, my, mo my mother and my daughter, we arrived in Maui uh, at the end of January. And we arrived here as a, tour as a tourist. We, were, we had an intention to stay here for about five or six weeks. Uh, that's what we usually do when we visit um, the United States and our friends here. Um, my husband and my father, they arrived uh, later. They, they, a flight out of Ukraine was supposed to be February 24th, which is the first day of war in Ukraine. Uh, they, their plan initial was to stay here in Maui for two weeks and then all, all five of us, or our family, was supposed to go back to Ukraine at the beginning of March. I'm glad you didn't go back. Would have been a hassle. Um, so now, can, can you ask your dad what happened between the time you left Mikolaev and the time he left Mikolaev? What was happening in Ukraine? What was his experience there like in that period? Расскажи, пожалуйста, пару слов по поводу того, что было в Украине и в Николаеве в период с тех пор, как мы уехали в конце января до того момента, как ты уехал в конце февраля оттуда. То есть, что было в течение февраля до начала войны? В течение февраля до начала войны никаких особо происшествий не было. Не было, понятно, готовы ли будет Россия вести военные действия или нет. Показывали новости о том, что Россия поддерживает ЛНР и ДНР. В основном на это шли. Шли очень много новостей по поводу учений. During, during that period uh, in Ukraine, uh, there were some news, but there were no specific news about uh, the invasion. There were a lot of news about uh, trainings uh, that the Russia claimed is to be as trainings uh, all around the Ukrainian border. And also uh, that they are planning to support the uh, DNR and LNR, which is the Donetsk um, National Republic and Lugansk uh, National Republic, which is on the far east of Ukraine. Uh, most of the news uh, in Ukraine were concentrated on just these two uh, topics. So you guys were in Ukraine in, in the 2013, 2014 revolution. Uh, you were in Mekhalayev uh, rather than Kiev, but can you describe what happened in that period of time? What happened to you and what did you hear was happening in Kiev? Мы были здесь в Украине в 2013-2014 году во время революции, да, и мы были в Николаеве, а не в Киеве, но тем не менее, что происходило в Украине или в нашем городе в тот период времени? Происходили разные... Собрание людей, которые одни собирались за революцию 13-14 года, другие против. Как бы очень много ну, в тот период было э, захват Крыма же. Вот, и очень многие люди выступали за возвращение Крыма в Украине. Вот, так как мы близко находимся в Херсонской, Херсонской Крыму области, то у нас в основном события были связаны с захватом Крыма. Вот, а также нехорошими действиями, скажем так, на Луганской и Донецкой, в Луганской и Донецкой областях. Были ну, неспокойно чуть-чуть время, потому что непонятно было, что будет дальше, как будет дальше, поэтому немножко как бы так неспокойно. So, um, at that time, there were, when the revolution came, there were people who were supporting the revolution. There were people who 
we're not supporting the revolution, but if we talk about the south of Ukraine where we're located and we're located very nearby the Crimea uh, Peninsula. Uh, so all the, uh, all the actions that were concentrated in the south of Ukraine were all these concerns about what was going on in Crimea and people in Ukraine uh, wanted the Crimea back. No one was expecting that the Crimea would be um, annexed. Um, I, don't, I don't know if that would be the correct word. Uh, and um, so everyone was very concerned and a lot of people didn't know uh, what will happen next during the revolution. No one knew uh, what will be, if it's gonna be, uh, if it will be calm or worse, what will be happening right after the revolution? So, um, what did your father, what did you and your father think about the Russians uh, based on what happened in Crimea, based on some of their other adventures, um, you know, in, in uh, Syria and the like, um, and with Chechnya as well? Were you aware of that? What did you think of the Russians? Of the Russian army, you mean? Of, of, Alec, of Vladimir Putin um, and the Russians. Okay. А что мы думаем по поводу русских, конкретно Путина, правительства и так далее, по поводу вот всех этих происходящих событий, то есть то, что в Крыму произошло, то, что произошло в Чечне, Сирии, то есть все их действия такого рода. Мы считаем, что это неправомерные действия с их стороны. Это чисто захватнические действия России по поводу данных стран. То есть Крым это, я считаю, это украинская территория, и они ни в коем образом не должны были захватывать. Действия в Сирии тоже я расцениваю как террористические атаки на сирийский народ. Вот так же в Чечне. Uh, the Russians' actions are unlawful to interfere, invade into, into our country because we consider Crimea being Ukrainian. Uh, also, uh, we did know, of course, we followed the news about um, the actions in Syria and in uh, Chechnya and, and actually some other countries too. And uh, we do think that these in, most of the times it's just the, the invasions, which is just unlawful just by its definition. Can you ask your father uh, how he got from Mikolaev um, to Maui and what, what challenges he had in making that trip and, and why he left and when he left? Can you ask him to describe his, his, uh, journey, his journey? Расскажи, пожалуйста, как ты uh, уехал из Николаева, свой путь в uh, Штаты, когда ты выехал и, и какой был путь? 24 февраля утром, в 8 часов утра, мы выехали из города Николаева в Одессу. В это время уже мы знали о том, что города Украины были подвержены атакам вооруженных сил России. Ты будешь переводить или мне все рассказывать? Uh, so, um... On the 24th of February, uh, at about 8, 8 a.m., he was already heading from Mikolaev city to Odessa International Airport. And at this moment already, we got the information that uh, the invasion into our country uh, has started and that some of the uh, cities of Ukraine uh, were uh, uh, attacked, uh, had, had missile attacks uh, from, from the Russia side. Okay. Когда мы ехали, когда мы ехали в Одессу, мы уже по радио в машине услышали о том, что аэропорт в Одессе закрыт, небо закрыто, так как его тоже атаковали российские войска и другие аэропорты Украины были атакованы российскими войсками. Поэтому было принято решение ехать на границу с Молдавией и уже с Молдавии с Кишинева вылетать в Турцию, а затем в США. Uh, so by the time they got to the airport, to Odessa International Airport, uh, 
we all got the information that all of the airports of Ukraine uh, were uh, blocked and uh, they were closed. Uh, and that the, the sky over Ukraine was closed for the passenger uh, airplanes. So he, made, he and my husband, there were two of them, they had made a decision to uh, go to the Moldova border because that was the, 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 the closest way. And they crossed the border. And uh, so the next plan was to go to uh, Chisinau um, International Airport in Moldova and fly to the United States from there. Okay. okay. And, and, and go ahead. И поддерживали нас вели нас поэтому мы могли владеть ситуацией то есть что происходит но на границе с молдавией были уже очереди мы пересекли где-то в течение нескольких часов и по пути в кишинев э, на машине попутной мы уже узнали что небо молдавии также закрыто для полетов вот и было принято решение ехать на сам кишинев центр города для того чтобы искать пути пересечения на транспорте границы, в частности, в Румынии, а уже с Румынии дальше двигаться. Uh, well, due to our being, due to the fact that we've been in constant connection with, uh, with them, uh, we, uh, we were trying to give them the updates and the news because no one at that day, no one really knew what, what's really going on and then how long it's going to be going on for. Um, by the time they almost reached the Chisinau uh, International Airport, we found out the information that the, that, the, that the sky, the air over Moldova was closed too. So there were no airplanes coming in and out to Moldova also. So there was no any longer point to fly out of Moldova. There was no possibility to fly out of Moldova. So they just had to go into the city and try to find the next way out and how, how to do what would be the next steps. And so uh, the decision was um, to go towards Romania to Bucharest and fly out of there. And they did. И потом из Румынии куда? Из да из Румынии мы в Турцию прилетели, вылетели, но уже более-менее нормально, но все равно беспокойство. А с Турцией уже Сан-Франциско и затем на Мау. Uh, so uh, they were able to get uh, to get to fly out of Bucharest, Romania, to Istanbul, Turkey, and from Istanbul, Turkey, it was a non-stop direct flight to San Francisco, the United States, and then from San Francisco to Maui. Oh, wonderful! Does he consider himself? Does he consider himself lucky? Uh, he managed to escape all kinds of problems. He managed to get out in time. Um, it, uh, it had he stayed there. Uh, we can talk about what would have happened, but does he consider himself lucky? Do you consider him lucky? Do you consider your husband lucky? Ты чувствуешь себя счастливым из-за того, что вот так получилось, что несмотря на все препятствия получилось выехать и уехать Я конечно же счастлив, что у нас все нормально и мы вместе с нашими семьями вот за нас все хорошо. Но все же я переживаю за наших родных, которые там остались. Вот это как там двоякое чувство, я не знаю, как это объяснить. Но а, за нас и... я, конечно же, рад и благодарен э, в первую очередь семье Баркла и Кэсси, что ну, так получилось, что они настояли, и мы смогли здесь оказаться в безопасном месте, и далеко от взрывов и того ада, который творится сейчас на Украине. Uh, yes, he considers himself being lucky because they made this way and they and that seemed to be like a perfect timing, even though no one really timed it that way. And uh, he ha he has this mixture feelings because in, in on one hand, he's happy that he's together with his family and he's safe here and he's very thankful to Kathleen Barkley who also been in contact for all these a uh, long way to the United States and that they kept insisting that they should make it to the final destination, which is Maui at this time. 
uh, that's, the fa- that's the family that, that, um, that's the U.S. family that, that is hosting that is hosting us right now. Yes. A shout out to them. I'm sorry. A shout out to them. Uh, yes, yes. And uh, on the other hand, uh, he still has very um, sad feelings because um, we still have the rest of the family in Ukraine, and we worry about them every day. Uh, do I consider? My husband and my father lucky. Yes, I, I, uh, I basically didn't sleep for more than two days because it took them about three days to get from Ukraine to uh, the United States. At the beginning, because we bought the tickets at the beginning of February and the date was February twenty fourth, and during buying the tickets, we got we had no idea that that would be the first day of the war. Uh, so when 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 I started to receive the first messages from our family and friends that there are missile attacks, my first thought was like, why is it this day? Like, why didn't they fly out one day before? Because when until you know until they landed in San Francisco, um, I couldn't relax because I you know anything could go wrong. Uh, and also. Um, our men, they crossed the border before they announced the state of emergency in Ukraine, which means that they had a legal uh, right to leave the country. Um, and it was just about five hours later, they already announced the state of emergency, which would make it impossible for them to leave. That was the rule that uh, if you're between 18 and 60, you had to stay and fight in the army? Uh, you have to stay and be ready to fight. You don't specifically have to fight right away but you have to stay in the country mm, wow okay wow fantastic and so now this family uh taking care of you you're staying with them do you know any other ukrainian people in maui do you do you have any uh, uh you know any friends or associates there who are ukrainian in the same circumstance uh as far as we are as far as we know we're the only ukrainian family on maui that that is here on these circumstances. Uh, during during our stay here, I did found several um, Ukrainian people who are now actually the residents, uh, the citizens of the United States. So they moved from they're originally from Ukraine, but they moved uh, out of Ukraine ten or fifteen years ago under under different reasons. Uh, but um, we're the only ones who who are here because of the war yeah. on Maui. So, uh, Vlada, what is your plan? What is your dad's plan? I mean, you're in limbo right now. Um, here you are. Um, the war is still going on. Uh, your family is still at risk in Mykolaiv. Um, well, well, how do you see the future for your family uh, and all the members? Uh, on Планы на сейчас, то есть надо, ты, ты скажешь пару слов, и я скажу пару слов. Хорошо. Ну, планы на, на сейчас, конечно же, ну, иметь возможность жить здесь, работать здесь, получать ну, какие-то необходимые медикаменты, продукты, то есть возможность, чтобы жить, конечно же, и планы. Это находиться здесь, никуда не не уезжать. И планы в том, что мы надеемся, очень надеемся, что все-таки эта война скоро закончится, будет какое-то восстановление, потом в будущем вернуться домой. Uh, so my father says uh, the plan is to live for now um, and to try to to try to um, uh, maintain our living here. Uh, to be able to obtain the uh, the status of staying here, to be able to uh, obtain the uh, ability to have work permission here, to to be able to stay here for uncertain amount of time, uh, to to be able to uh, afford food and uh, and other everyday necessities. Uh, if we talk about long term plans, we uh, hope every day that um, the war will. Um, will end as soon as possible and at some point we'll be able to go back home to Ukraine mm-hmm. and I can add uh, from that that um, for the first month after the invasion 
frankly speaking, it was even difficult to plan the next day. We did like you can't you can plan your life when it just I don't know ended in one day um because because literally because of the war it just it it um divided into before and after uh so um it's it's hard to plan anything for now and just we just have to as they say go with the flow i guess uh what's your father's occupation what was he doing in in ukraine um and does he want to get back to doing what that was the same for you. Чем ты занимался в Украине и хочешь ли ты вернуться к этой же профессии, когда вернешься? В последнее время в Украине я занимался, я работал по ремонту автомобилей, по подбору запчастей для ремонта автомобилей различных марок. Вот, наверное, да. Я очень долго этим занимался и, возможно, хотел бы вернуться тоже к этой работе после того, как вернуться в Украину. Да. Uh, in Ukraine, uh, he was uh, working in an um, automobile repairment shop uh, that, and he was uh, managing, uh, ordering uh, the parts for different, different um, types and categories of vehicles. Uh, and uh, yeah, he'd been doing it for a long time. For many years, he'd been uh, involved with the car repairment and he would like to continue doing the same when he comes back. Uh, tell him, tell him he looks young. Uh, thank you. Thank you. Uh, as for me, I um, I worked I worked as a travel agent. I had uh, my own travel agency in Mikolaev. Uh, its name actually is Aloha Travel because I just have a long <laughs> story connected with Hawaii uh, and uh, so I've been a travel agent for a long time and unfortunately now there's no uh, the tourism doesn't exist in Ukraine and sad story about my job is we don't even when the war starts it's going to take a while for the infrastructure uh, to be rebuilt in Ukraine and for the people to start traveling again uh, because uh, people need would need time to recover after war to earn the money but also to ha to have the faith back into the future because what happened to a lot of my tourists is that they left the country let's say on the 20th of february to go on a wonderful trip like we did to go on a wonderful trip to egypt to the red sea and then all of a sudden, being away from their houses, they 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 got the news that they just can't come back. Um, so people would be afraid to to experience the same thing once again in their life if that happens again. Uh, and same with us, we we left the country with just one one suitcase of uh, of. Uh, um, of of clothes and of things that we took with us each uh with pure um, b b believing that we're going to go back home and continue our lives uh, there to con con continue what we've been doing there back in ukraine and then just being away from our country all of a sudden we realize that at this moment we just can't go back yeah so um i would like you to help me understand ukraine by the way my family uh my family lived in uh Podolia. Podolsk in Ukraine. Uh, really? Oh, really? Oh, wow. Uh, у него uh, семья, его жила mm -hmm. в Подольске в Украине. Oh, wow. yeah. <laughs> yeah. Знаем, uh, you have Ukrainian roots. <laughs> Красивый oh. город очень. <laughs> That's a beautiful city. What What makes Ukraine different? Why is Ukraine different than the countries around it? What makes Ukraine special for the people, the history, the industry, the, the quality of life, the people, especially the people? What makes Ukraine different from other countries? People, industry, history, geolocation. What makes Ukraine different from other countries? 
В первую очередь, я считаю, что Украина отличается тем, что она всегда боролась за свою независимость очень долгое время. Всегда она пытались на ее землю кто-то претендовать. И поэтому ну, одно из хороших качеств, я считаю, то, что это умение бороться за свою землю, это ни в коем случае не посягательство на другие земли. Вот. Это терпение, это единение. Это очень красивый язык, я считаю. И это то, что сейчас показала нынешняя война, что украинский народ очень дружный, очень сильный и очень-очень любит свою родину, землю. Thing about Ukraine is that historically we've been um, fighting for our independence a lot of times. That's not the first time today, and um, yes. and it's the people who like freedom. It's the people who fight for freedom, and and what we fight on our land. That's a big difference. We don't try to get a piece of someone's land. We just want to keep our land safe and protect it. And that makes people, um, what's good now about our people in Ukraine is that we're all united in our goals and dreams. And uh, it's also a beautiful country and beautiful language. <laughs> yeah, people in Ukraine are outstanding by, by, by our love to, for freedom. And I can add to that is, um, I didn't, um, It's not my words, but I think they really reflect it really good right now is they say if you want to know um, the, the bravery has two colors now, it's blue and yellow. And, um, and, and that's, that's right that the Ukrainian people, um, we are very, um, we can have some, you know, arguments within, within the country like every country does. We can have some problems. We can like or not like uh, some things around the world or inside of our country, but all of us are very, um, uh, very ready to fight for our land. And uh, all of us are very united in terms of uh, liking uh, freedom and, and liking just to live in peace. What, what about um, uh, Volodymyr uh, Zelensky? Uh, has he been doing a good job? Ask your dad, has he been doing a good job? Uh, is he uh, as courageous as it seems? Is he a, a good leader for the Ukrainian people now? Как насчет Владимира Зеленского? Он свою работу сейчас хорошо выполняет. Он хороший лидер для людей сейчас. Да, я считаю, да, потому что, во-первых, он остался в стране, не сбежал и всегда выступает каждый день в поддержку всего населения и которые и военных, которые воюют, и гражданских людей, которые остаются. Он старается каждый день, как мне кажется, делать все возможное для того, чтобы прекратилась эта война и Украина смогла вернуться к мирной, мирной жизни. И что больше всего также мне нравится, что Зеленский, Владимир Зеленский, наш президент, не идет на то, чтобы разделить Украину и оставить ее по кусочкам для того, чтобы, ну, может быть, какие-то блага иметь. То есть он стремится, чтобы Украина осталась единой. Ukraine, yes, he su yes, he supports, uh, my father supports, me too, <laughs> so I can sign under his words. Um, uh, our president, Volodymyr Zelensky, at this moment, because he is, first of all, he's in the country, he didn't escape. Uh, second is that every day he's doing a tremendous job to uh, draw attention to what's going on, to also Uh, he puts a lot of efforts to uh, keep people in the country and Ukrainians all over the world still united. Uh, he is really doing a lot of, uh, he's doing as much as he can right now. And he really keeps our people united. He's not trying to divide our country into pieces, which is easily to do right now in his own benefit. That could probably be an easier path but he chose a, a more difficult path, which is good for, the, for people. Mm. So, um, you know, one thing is that um, he's, uh, he's facing some very difficult times. Um, Mikolaev has been essentially destroyed. 
with war crimes and uh, sophisticated weapons that are um, designed to kill civilians, not even really military, um, and, um, and other cities, um, Bucha, for example, have been the subjects of war crimes and all that, and now the Russians have put a new and very brutal general in charge, and he's using even more sophisticated weapons and landmines and, um, you know, just completely demolishing uh, the cities that they attack. And I, I wonder how, you know, you feel about that. It's, this is not war uh, in the ordinary sense. This is war against the people of Ukraine. Uh, and that's, that's not ordinary war. Um, and I just wonder what your reaction is, and also whether you think um, that Ukraine will survive in your heart. Do you think that Ukraine will survive? Он наблюдает за тем, что происходит в Украине, и что российские войска, генералы, они используют разного рода извращенные оружие, виды оружия против украинских городов. Буча один из ярких примеров. В Николаеве тоже есть разрушение уже на данный момент. И он говорит, что это уже не похоже на войну в своем каком-то таком э, стандартном понимании. Это уже больше как война против народа. Э, да. Считаем ли мы точно так же и какие наши ощущения по этому поводу? А самое главное, э, считаем ли мы Украина выстоит? Да, война уже выходит за рамки принятого как бы в нынешнее время понимание этого слова. Используются запрещенные виды вооружения, которые направлены на, на то, чтобы погибало как можно больше людей, а не разрушение военной инфраструктуры. Сейчас идет обстрел и ракетами стреляет и артиллерия именно по жилым комплексам городов, где погибает, где очень большая вероятность гибели большого количества украинцев. Вот. Вот. Я, считаю, я считаю, что мы победим. Нам помогут. То есть самим нам, конечно, тяжело будет выстоять, но я все же очень-очень все верю и надеюсь на то, что Украина победит в данной войне. Почему? А потому что еще мы справедливо воюем, а уже в российской армии они употребляют эти неплохие способы ведения войны, скажем так, именно из-за того, что они не могут... Ну, достичь своей цели быстро захватить. Вот они пытаются теперь уничтожить просто народ и города. Yes, uh, the, the war itself it, it it's gone beyond its ordinary uh, standards. If if the war has standards, then this war is beyond the standards. That's for sure. And they are using um, all different kinds of weapons and also. Um, that's truly you're right that it's truly is against uh, the people now because as they said at the beginning that they're going to just uh, attack the uh, military uh, uh, objects or the military bases the military storages well that's not true because uh, it's been a long time now already when they been attacking the civilian parts of the cities and the the, the just the common people um are suffering and dying from that and so that that is definitely is beyond it's uh, beyond just having war between the countries it's the war against uh, the people but we do uh believe that ukraine will uh stand and then ukraine will survive and and it's there is an easy explanation for that our people our army fights on our own land for our own land. And that gives you tremendous power inside and spirit inside. Rather than their people, uh, they come on the on some on on the on another land and they don't know what they fight for. <laughs> Many of them don't know what they fight for. And that plays good for us. It's just because the Ukrainians have this spirit. We know that we have this spirit and we have this desire to win rather than they uh, a lot of them are lost and they don't know um, 
what to do and why to do. And we're talking about just common uh, soldiers. Mm. <clears throat> One last uh, question, Vlada, and that is this. You know, Volodymyr uh, Zelensky has repeated a number of times that he wants more weapons, more support uh, from the uh, EU, from NATO, from the US, from the coalition. Um, and uh, of course, um, the, the NATO and the EU and the US, uh, the coalition has provided a certain amount of support. Uh, but if you ask Vladimir Zelensky uh, right now, he would say, it's not enough, we need more. Uh, what are your thoughts about that? Has the West provided sufficient support to help you? Um, and if not, uh, what would you say to, to President Biden about it? Получается, Владимир Зеленский говорит о том, что нам нужно в Украину больше оружия. В принципе, мир поставляет оружие в Украину, но по словам Зеленского на данный момент этого недостаточно. Какое наше мнение по этому поводу? Достаточно ли или недостаточно? Надо ли больше? И какое могло бы быть сообщение? Как бы... Какие могли, что мы могли бы по этому поводу сказать президенту Байдену, который президент Соединенных Штатов Америки? Ну, честно говоря, мы находимся здесь и тяжело говорить, что там э, происходит. Но по сообщениям, по новостям поставляется оружие, я вижу. Но не знаю, опять же, по новостям, в моем понимании, э, хотелось бы, чтобы те ракеты, которые летят в мирные города, чтобы у наших военных были всегда возможности сбить эти ракеты. Пока средств противовоздушной обороны, ну, как, как я вижу, мало, так как ракеты долетают до городов и бомбят э, ну, гражданские дома и все остальное. Поэтому... It's, uh, ну, вот well, we are, we are here, and it's, it's pretty difficult to give an expert evaluation about this question, frankly speaking. And, uh... What we, what we can get in information from the news just like everyone else and from the news it seems like yes there there are there is a tremendous help from all over the world at the same time from the same news we can tell that um it seems like ukraine needs more and when we say more i mean um ukraine needs more of these um weapons that uh can destroy the the uh the miss the missile attacks if i say it correct mm -hmm. uh to, to to destroy them in the air so the missile attacks doesn't actually reach the land seems like ukraine needs more of those uh but again it's 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 pretty difficult to um to give a proper evaluation on that я считаю что нужно больше самолётов чтобы закрыть небо украины и иметь возможность защищать атаковать Ну, на нашей земле российские войска для того, чтобы они не стреляли по нашим городам. Uh, my father есть, thinks that... Считаю, это мое личное мнение. Да. My father thinks that, and that's his own opinion, that the... Um, that Ukraine needs the more um, airplanes to protect the sky and to attack the Russian airplanes in the sky if needed. He thinks we need more of those. I must say, Vlada, I like the Ukrainian people. Thank you. Он должен нам сказать, что ему нравятся украинские люди. And I think, I think that if your your father Igor took off his glasses, he'd look a lot like Zelensky. И ему кажется, что ты с косички выглядишь немножко как Зеленский. Спасибо. You know, I I just I'll just add. Um, there are different opinions on the war, and um, and I can read the, and there's one opinion, uh, it, it comes from a lot of Russian people, but also from people all over the world who, you know, when, it, when it's the war, it's always, it's always the question on how, you know, how, if you want to sacrifice a lot, I mean, there's a lot of destroyment going on, and of course, there are a lot of people um, who are saying, well, maybe, Maybe it would be better if Ukraine would just surrender, and maybe then it's going to be less destroyment, less uh, less people deaths, and uh, 
And that's, I think that's also a unique thing about Ukrainian is that of course we want less death, deaths, of course we want less destroyments in our cities, but you know, we're the people of freedom. If we don't like our government, if we don't like our president, we just kick them out. <laughs> And um, it, and it's about our own governments. And so when it comes to about some just random people or other people from other countries, it, like, no, we, we're not gonna surrender. We, we will not surrender to another country. <laughs> or we, we, you know, it's, it's, and I think that's a unique thing about, thing about Ukraine is um, it's, it, it's, it's difficult to fight until the end, but we we probably will fight until the end. That's what I see about Ukraine. That's how we feel, and that's how a lot of people in Ukraine feel. Uh, but we know why. But we know uh, why we're doing it. What we're doing it for. Um, well, Zelensky. And we know Zelensky has made the point, and a lot of people, I, for example, agree with him is that um, in Ukraine, the Ukrainians are fighting not only for Ukraine, they're fighting for, for freedom, democracy, the liberal world order. So it takes on a, a special meaning beyond just the invasion and the war in Ukraine. Anyway, we're out of time, Vlada uh, and Igor. Thank you very much for joining us today. Uh, I really appreciate your answers and your and your 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 views of these things and and um, your attitudes about what is happening. Thank you for that. And I hope we can I hope we can circle back and do this again. Tell your dad and ask him to say farewell, will you? Uh, но я хотел бы одно слово сказать тоже поблагодарить американцев всех и нашу семью, которая принимает и других за то теплое отношение к нам, к украинцам, которые находятся в Украине, которые вынуждены были уехать. Спасибо огромное, мы ну, очень рады, что вы, ну, я считаю, очень очень нас поддерживаете и тепло принимаете всех. Спасибо огромное. And my father says big thank you uh, to every person who now think about Ukraine and and help Ukraine in different ways. We we thank the family that is hosting us and other uh, U.S. citizens who um, uh, who help Ukrainian refugees or Ukrainians in Ukraine in in any sort of way um, and for the support because um, these people also make a big difference. So thank you. Thank you, Vada. All of Hawaii says aloha. Thank you. Thank you so much for watching Think Tech Hawaii. If you like what we do, please like us and click the subscribe button on YouTube and the follow button on Vimeo. You can also follow us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and LinkedIn, and donate to us at thinktechhawaii.com. Mahalo.